the very first type of deployment, which is called as recreate deployment. Okay. Now, as I said, so what is recreate? Whatever is existing, delete and create fresh, right? And that's where now, if you try to understand, so let's say for this example, again, as I said, uh, we have a web application which is Java based and it is a stateless application. So for a stateless application, you will be running it as a deployment object in Kubernetes. And let's assume I have a node port service to access. And let's say I have two replicas for me because even if it is a QA team who is doing a functional test or a regression test, I've told you, you need always minimum two replicas for resilience so that if one pod goes down, you will have the other pod serving the. Okay, so now, so let's assume we have a deployment first done. Okay, so we'll understand why do we need it? When do we need it? But let me just explain it first. So here you have an application and let's say there is a build. Let's call it as build 100. Okay, so now build 100 is running and you're accessing. Now what happens in recreate? Suppose if I want to replace this two replicas with a new build image called build 200 and there should be new two new containers based on that build 200. So for that, in a recreate method, what happens when you do the changes in your YAML file or manifest file? And then when you say kubectl apply, then immediately in a recreate method, first the existing pods will be just deleted. Okay, terminated. And then it will try to bring the two new pods from build 200. Okay, so that is what we call it as recreate. So existing, how many ever replicas are there, it will just terminate and then it will take the new image what you have given and it will be created. Okay. Now, when should we use it? Okay. So the major advantage of this method is you get everything in one shot, which is why we also call it as big bang. Okay. But this is not always good for every one of us to use because especially when developers are working, okay? Now, they don't really worry about how quickly the applications are coming. I mean, it doesn't mean that they don't care, but they just have something smaller to test like a unit test. So they should be able to quickly stop something and bring it back. So in that way, the recreate deployment method is usually used for development deployments like if you are a developer and you want to do a unit test or even in your ci cd if you are trying to do a smoke test as part of your continuous integration before you certify the builds right so for all these kind of deployments you can think of using recreate because the disadvantage of this method is you are shutting down everything right so let's say that you are accessing your bank and suddenly if the bank shut downs all your application what will happen to your transaction it's gone so that's where this method of deploying is not suitable for production and not even for qa so usually most of the development side you can think of using it but the benefit here is you get everything instant right you just delete everything and create everything because i'm not worried about the downtime here so that's where it's only for development purpose okay now let us try to see this more practically now for this so we have our own application all right which i'll show you now this application i've just customized it a little bit in such a way when i deploy a build you should be seeing a corresponding color related to it plus you will also see how the traffic is flowing okay so for this example think the first build whatever that we are deploying the color for that is orange now suppose if i'm deploying another build 
which is built to like in your CI or in your nightly build. When you do the next build, let's say instead of giving the build number or version, I'm just giving you the color so that it's easy. And the third build, if I want, you can take it as a green color or the image is going to be called as green. So that the first build is orange build, blue build and green build. Okay, so just remember this. So now for this demo, I have a mini cube clustered in my AWS, so I'm just going to use it. I've already started my mini cube, so let me just check nothing is running. Okay, now what I've already done, I've defined certain YAML files. Okay, but uh, just for your benefit, I'm just going to quickly walk through all these things. So let's just take first is the recreate. Okay, so. Okay, so now as I said, for this example, I'm going to take a web application for Visvatech, which is a stateless application. So I'm giving the object for Kubernetes as deployment. Okay, let me just get it back. So it's going to be a deployment object and I'm saying I need two replicas and then you can see all the other things are there and this is the image that I'm taking and like I said the first build that I'm deploying is a blue build or instead of giving the build number I've given the tag with the image name which says blue so that way my application will be running in blue color plus you will see the traffic flowing to blue okay and this is gonna expose port 8080 which is what we are going to access and for this i have given a service okay and in this service we have the type called node port and this 8080 i'm mapping it to port 80 so when we run there will be a node port given so when you try to access you should be able to see the application but what's the major difference is so far when you are trying to deploy i said by default it will be rolling update and this is where explicitly if you want this to be deployed using a strategy called recreate then in the spec of your object you need to add a new keyword called strategy and type is recreate okay so as first this is the first time so you should not see any difference so I'll just go ahead and say kubectl apply fnf recreate. Okay, so you should see I have my two replicas deployment object and replica set. And for this, I also have a service, and this is the service port. Okay, now let me come to this. I'll take the public DNS. Now, I've already added the port in my security group in bound rules so that all these are accessible. So I need to give 32516. So this is my application. Okay. So what I want you to actually notice this color indicates what build that you have deployed rather than the build number i'm giving it plus whatever the traffic that this application is receiving you will also see that it's been sending to the replicas which is running using the blue image which is nothing but first build okay so i want you to keep note of this so that how it changes okay so now what is recreate there is something already running I want to replace this old one with a new image in which it will just shut down everything and then recreate, right? So for that, first let's look at the screen here. So it's the same deployment YAML. What we will do, I'll try to say recreate. Okay, now as I said, I want to change this blue to. So now I'm changing it with a new tag or a new image like assume i have done a second build which is what i was trying to represent i'm not doing a build here so there is something already built and i'm going to use it okay so now i have already done the build and i've stored it in the docker hub so that is 
blue build okay so okay in fact i wanted to do i replaced it anyway now let's say this as <laughs> two and this is one yeah i just replaced it no problem all right so now for me my second build is orange so what we will do i'll change here orange and i'm not changing any of this okay so what happens so this i want you to have a look at one more part so so i'll take another screen and i'll connect so what we will do here to see both of them i'll say cube cuttle get pots watch okay. okay so what is recreate existing pot should be terminated and new pot should come so that we will see here okay maybe i'll keep this in the front in this okay so just watch it now so anyway i've changed the build to orange so now what is deployment is just about creating new containers but we are going to do it in a recreate strategy so if i say cube cuttle apply hyphen f what is happening in a recreate first it's getting terminated so both the replicas are terminated then it replaces it with new pods and that's where you can see you have now got two new pods running okay so this is what we call it as recreate so the advantage here is you're just switching everything together but the disadvantage is if i was accessing my service if i come back you should see there should be a interruption but now anyway as a user if you're accessing what is happening now the service is sending the traffic to the new containers where you have the containers running out of orange deployment right and that's where you can see the traffic the apis is receiving earlier it received from the blue containers now it is receiving from the orange containers okay now let me show it once again so this time what we will do again i'll change this deployment to green so this is where assume as if this is the third build so green all right so now see what is the disadvantage so anyway we know that the disruption is going to happen but here if i go ahead say kubectl apply okay you see the containers got stopped because of this the application is not up so the traffic is not there in fact there's nothing there so as a user if you try to access nothing is there that is why the service is not able to redirect or receive anything which is what is happening or which is what will happen in your application if you run it so that's where it's not suitable for production okay but once the new container comes up automatically now you should see the service should be redirecting the traffic to the new set of containers which is the green build or the third build okay yeah. it's just that it takes time for that to come up but anyway so same thing So two new pods are there. Yeah. Anyway, cache would be there. So now if I just go here. See, it started giving you the green. Anyway, so this just for your visualization, if you understood. So in a recreate, what happens? you delete everything as a replica and then you create so definitely there is a 
downtime in this so it's more suitable for development where you don't care about your application stopping and starting okay now 